BC Boom. Welcome back to our BC Boom Kids channel. We are so excited that you are with us today. Over the last couple of weeks, we have been in a series community garden growing from the ground up. And we have learned all about being humble and showing humility to others. Our greatest example of being humble or showing humility for others is our very own Jesus Christ. And today I want you to stay tuned because we are going to learn more about how Jesus continued to show humility for his followers and his friends, even after he had been crucified, buried, and then resurrected. Stay tuned. You really do not want to miss this lesson and I'll be back. Hey there, welcome to Story Lab. This week we're talking about humility while we take a look at the story of two guys on a road trip who had the greatest surprise of their lives. Ooh, spicy. Hey, I'm Carter. And I'm Zeke. We're talking about humility, which is putting others first by giving up what you think you deserve. You know what I've always thought I deserved? What? An invisibility cloak. What would you do with the invisibility cloak? I am so glad you asked. Wrapped in a secret sheath of invisibility, there's nothing I couldn't do, like acquire extra cookies. Or surprise my friends. Sherry, Sherry baby, Sherry, Sherry baby. <laughs> the possibilities are endless. Okay, number one, I can see why you want to be invisible for karaoke. Oh, I, I don't want to make people jealous of my amazing vocal stylings, obviously. And number two, you will be happy to know that scientists are working on a real invisibility cloak. What? Yep, scientists have engineered a new class of materials called metamaterials that interact with lights in ways we've never seen before. A metamaterial cloaking device can hide an object by reflecting light around it. So, someone watching will simply see signals from images behind the object, as if it weren't there. A real life invisibility cloak? Mind blown. Um, Zeke, what are you doing? Ordering my invisibility cloak, of course. Um, I... I hate to tell you this, Zeke, but... I-N-V-I-S-I-B-I... -I -I Why are there so many eyes? So far, scientists have only been able to cloak something less than one inch tall. Oh. So I need a invisibility cloak and a shrink ray. Actually, I know a way we can make something disappear right here in this room. I've already been disappointed once today. No, really. It's super easy. Don't break my heart. This will work. Honest. Well then, let's, let's make, make it. it. For this experiment, you need a large beaker, a small beaker, and some oil. Step one, fill a large glass beaker about three-fourths of the way with oil. Step two, take the small glass beaker and using tongs, push it all the way down into the oil. There you go. Whoa, it really worked. I can't see the small beaker at all. It's our very own cloaking device. Okay, science, how does this happen? When light travels through glass and then the oil, the speed of light slows down. On reflection, this makes the glass look invisible. The slowing down process of light and reflection through certain objects is known as the index of refraction. The beaker really is in there, right? Yeah. I love science. Well, we're about to look at something else that wasn't what it appeared to be. It's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today, we're in Luke, the third book in the New Testament. Luke is one of the four Gospels, the books that tell the story of Jesus' life. But before Luke, in the very beginning, out of a deep, deep love, God made an amazing world. But when people turned away from God, the world was broken. God made a plan to draw people back into relationship. So at the right time, God's very own son, Jesus, came to live among us. 
When Jesus grew up, he traveled from town to town teaching and healing. But the religious leaders made plans to get rid of him. Jesus was crucified on a cross and died. But early Sunday morning, Jesus returned to life. Lots of his friends saw him. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Brian. On the very first Easter Sunday, things were a little wild and crazy for Jesus' followers. First, the tomb was empty. Then, some reported seeing angels. And finally, some said they saw Jesus alive. For those who had not yet seen Jesus with their own eyes, <laughs> it seemed too good to believe. One of these followers was a man named Cleopas. Sunday afternoon, Cleopas and a friend were walking from Jerusalem to the town of Emmaus, about seven miles away. Luke, who wrote down this story, didn't tell us the name of the friend, so let's give him a name. How about, uh, I don't know, Micah. As they walked, Cleopas and Micah talked about everything that had happened in the last week, trying to understand. While they were deep in conversation, a man came up and started walking along with them. Spoiler alert, the man was Jesus. But God kept Cleopas and Micah from recognizing him. Jesus asked them, what are you talking about as you walk along? The two men stopped in their tracks. <laughs> they just couldn't believe anybody could have missed all the action. Are you the only person visiting Jerusalem who doesn't know about the things that have happened there in the last few days? What things? About Jesus of Nazareth. He was a prophet. He, he, was, he was powerful in what he said and did in the sight of God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed Jesus over to be sentenced to death. They nailed him to a cross. We had hoped that he was the one who was going to set Israel free. Yeah. Now it's three days since all this happened and some of the women who followed Jesus have told us something crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Get this. Early this morning, they went to the tomb, but they didn't find his body. They came and told us they saw angels who said Jesus was alive. After that, some of our friends went to the tomb. They saw it was empty, just as the women had said. How long it takes you to believe all that the prophets said. Didn't the Messiah have to suffer these things and then receive his glory? As they walked together toward Emmaus, Jesus started explaining everything that the scriptures said about him. Now remember, these men did not have the New Testament. They had the laws that God had given to Moses and all the stories and prophecy written down in the Old Testament. Jesus went through it all, step by step, and explained God's plan. He told them how it was predicted all through scripture that the Messiah, Jesus, would come to save God's people and that he would have to die and return to life. Cleopas and Micah were completely floored by what Jesus said. When they reached Emmaus, it looked like Jesus was about to keep going, but they didn't want the conversation to end. Stay with us. It's evening, the, the day is almost over. So Jesus went into the place where they were staying and sat down to dinner with them. He picked up the bread. Thank you for giving us our daily bread. As Jesus broke the loaf of bread and handed it to Cleopas and Micah, their eyes were opened. Suddenly, they recognized who he was. Jesus, it's you. As soon as the men recognized Jesus, he disappeared. Remember how excited we were on the road as he explained what the scriptures meant? It could only have been Jesus. <sighs> the men were so excited that they left their dinner sitting on the table and ran all the way back to Jerusalem that evening, seven whole miles. They went immediately to the place where Jesus' closest friends were staying. We've seen Jesus. He walked with us on the road to Emmaus. The men told about everything that had happened. It was just one more amazing confirmation of the incredible truth. Yeah, that Jesus is alive. The end. Just imagine if you're one of those guys. I mean, you find out it's Jesus and then he just disappears. Like he can do that now. I wish I could have heard Jesus himself explaining God's whole plan. Yeah, that was a pretty awesome thing Jesus did for them. So what's our part in the story? Jesus cared about his friends so much that he wanted them to understand the big picture of what God was doing. And we can take the time to help others understand what God is up to as well. 
Like if you have a friend that feels like they don't fit in anywhere, remind them that God has made them unique and he has a special place for them to feel that no one else can. Or maybe your cousin is going through a really rough time. You can encourage them that God can use even really hard things to do something good. You can show humility by taking the time to help people understand other stuff too, like a, a, a hard math problem. Or how to tie their shoe. Or the best way to shoot a basketball. Yeah, just be patient, even if they don't get it the first time. Or the second time. Yeah, I mean, I sure don't understand things right away either. Yeah, that's right, me included. See you next time. So, here's the thing. Put others first by helping them understand. Could we get a giant glass vat of oil for me to turn invisible in? Ew! The oil and glass invisibility effect does not work on opaque objects such as humans. Well, rats. How about you just enjoy some karaoke music? Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See, See you, you next time. time. Fly me to the moon. Let me play among the stars. by you forever I'm your friend you'll always be right here with me I'm so thankful for your love no matter what I do I know this is true you're by my side you'll never leave I want to thank you God for showing me who I am you're so good you help me to understand we are your sons and daughters such an amazing father Thank you God for coming to rescue me You're so good God you're everything I need Every minute of every day I just wanna say Thank you God I'm blown away by your love for me It goes on and never ends I belong to you I'm chosen by This is the and so This is the Green Garden Call-In Hour, where we're taking your calls and giving you advice on how to make your garden beautiful and verdant. Caller, go ahead. Hi, Brandon. Big fan. What's so, going on right now? I'm trying to make sure my succulents stay healthy during the upcoming summer months. Do you have any advice on watering frequency? Thanks so much. Love the show. 
Hey, caller, thanks so much for calling in. My thoughts are that all plants need water. So go ahead and water them all the time, every day, as much as possible. That's terrible advice. Uh, never mind, don't water them ever. They're smart plants, they'll figure it out. Next caller. Hey, Brandon, long time listener, first time caller. I'm trying to plant a blueberry bush, but I don't really know much about soil pH. Is that okay? Why not? As we all know, pH stands for plant hands, which blueberry bushes don't have, so you should be fine. Brandon! Uh, we've got to go to commercial break, but we'll be back soon with more insights and tips. You know nothing about gardening. I know! I ended up hosting this radio show somehow, and I, I still have no idea what I'm doing. How long have you been hosting this show? I don't know, seven years? Seven? Look, How did you get no this show? There's no time for this, John! I need help! Could we possibly bring on someone who knows stuff? Okay, sure. Uh, uh, please welcome someone who knows stuff! <laughs> Come on in! Come on in! Have a seat, have a seat. Yeah. Oh, thanks for having me. Just one second. And we're back after that short break. We've got a guest with us today. Could you please tell us who you are and what you know? Hi, I'm Lily, and I would say that I know a fair amount about gardening. Great to have you with us today. I am so sorry about this. I don't know anything about gardening, but I have to give these people advice. Is there any way you could help me out? Sure. Yeah, I'd be happy okay, to. Okay, that's great. Okay. So we've got a caller on the line. You're on the air, caller. Hey, I've heard a lot about composting, but it sounds like a lot of work. Should I try it? Don't. Putting posts in your garden will make it look bad. I Composting is when stuff like leaves and food scraps decompose and turn into nutrient-rich soil. Right, so you don't want things decomposing in your garden. That's gross. Uh, actually, you should absolutely give composting a shot. Not only is it good for your garden, but it's a great way to find uses for food scraps that would otherwise just end up in a landfill. So what I'm saying is composting is... is a good thing. Exactly. Yes. We have to take a quick break. Lily. Thank you so much for being on the show. You've proven in one question that you know more about this topic than I ever could. Well, I appreciate the vote of confidence, but I don't think that's true. I think you can know all these things. You just have to study and work and don't talk on your radio show about things that you're not sure about. Oh. Well, thank you for taking the time for helping me understand more about gardening and, and more about hosting a call-in gardening <laughs> radio show. Would you be interested in taking over by any chance? Oh, uh, I mean... Why not? Awesome! <laughs> I'm to help people when I can. Yeah, right. That's great. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, thanks for tuning into the show today, everyone. This is your host, Brandon, signing off. And this is your new host, Lily, signing on. So, when it comes to composting, you want to make sure that your soil is nutrient-filled. You also want to make sure that... Oh, hey! Yeah. Thank goodness Lily was here! I know, right? <laughs> but I still think posts make for an unsightly garden. No, no, no. She, that, that we're not talking about... Didn't you just listen to... Never, never, never mind. It, it, it's Bible story time with Kellen. Hey guys! Kellen, my man, what's going on today? Today we're going to be talking about a story from the book of Luke, where two men happen to be... I know this song. Diane Duet here reporting for Ancient News, where we only cover the oldest possible news. Later, floppy disk. Neither floppy nor disk. But first, since the crucifixion of Jesus, we've heard reports of some incredible things. Some eyewitnesses have even said they've seen Jesus alive. We go now live to the city of Emmaus to speak with one of those witnesses, Cleopas. Cleopas, can you tell us what happened? So. My friend and I were walking on the road from Jerusalem to the village of Emmaus. We were talking about all the stuff that's been going on in Jerusalem. And this guy comes up to us and he asks us what we're talking about. And we're like, you don't know? And what were you talking about? Well, you don't know either? We were talking about Jesus, of course. How he was a powerful prophet and was sentenced to death. How he died on the cross. 
we were both bummed because we were really sure that he was going to be the person to set Israel free. But Jesus was crucified and put in a tomb. That's what I'm saying. Three days ago that was. But that's not all. Today, some friends of ours went to Jesus' tomb and didn't find his body. They saw angels who told them that Jesus was alive. Amazing. Yeah. And, and you told all of this to the man who came up to you on the road? Yeah. And get this. He said we were being foolish. He said, and I remember this exactly. He said, how long it takes you to believe all the prophets said. Didn't the Messiah have to suffer these things and then receive his glory? And what did that mean? We weren't sure either. So, so this guy explained. He went through the scriptures, uh, starting all the way back with Moses and the prophets, all of it. It was like God had this plan for everything that's been happening. Fascinating story. I'm sure that's all there is to it, though. Actually, there's Back some... Back to you, Kellen. Okay. Well, that isn't exactly all there is to it, but that is how it started. You see, Cleopas and his friend were just arriving at home when they... There it is. We're back with more ancient news. Later, silly bands can actually be used as rubber bands. Maybe they're not so silly after all. But first, breaking news on the story we just left. We have here the friend who was walking with Cleopas on the road to Emmaus. That's right, my name is- No time for that, this is breaking news. Last we heard, you were on your way to Emmaus when a stranger walking with you explained everything that had been going on. Right, and when we got to the place we were staying, he wanted to keep walking, but we wanted to hear more. So we begged him to have dinner with us. And did he? He did. We sat down right here in this room, and that's when things got really crazy. The guy blessed the bread, and the second he broke it, we could see who he really was. And he was? Jesus. Shocking. Yeah, he was alive just like our friends had been saying. And then, just like that, he disappeared. So Jesus himself had been walking with you that whole day? The entire time. But after he vanished from dinner, Cleopas and I booked it back to Jerusalem because we had to tell the disciples what we saw. I'm being told we have one of Jesus' disciples, Simon. Simon, is all this true? Is Jesus alive? Yes. Absolutely fascinating. Jesus of Nazareth, once dead, now alive again and still taking the time to help people understand why he's here. Incredible. Thank you so much for sharing your story with Ancient News, Cleopas's friend. Actually, my name time is- Time for a break. Up next, where exactly is Waldo? I'm Diane DeWitt for Ancient News. Back to you, Kellen. Wow, that is some really good news right there. It's incredible enough that Jesus came back from the dead, but he wasn't done. He took the time to show himself to some of his followers and explain what God was up to to people who might have been confused. He helped people understand. That's another way Jesus was humble. Yep, and it's a way for us to show humility too. When we understand something and someone else doesn't, we can be patient with them and help them learn. Uh, like you do for us, Kellen. Yeah, right, and, and like Lily did for you and your radio show. Oh yeah. <laughs> hey, thanks for the story, Kellen. No problem. I'll see you next time. You know, I feel like I understand a little bit more about humility now. And I understand more about gardening, but I've given seven years of bad advice. Just think of all the dead plants. Yeah. Reveal the question. Oh, hey, great. Today's question is, when has someone helped you understand something? Yeah, every day of my life. Yeah. I mean, there's so much stuff going on all the time. Oh, like kids can explain to me how to install apps on my phone. Mm -hmm. Oh, I just learned from a podcast yesterday why you should never eat undercooked chicken. Oh no, that's good for you. It's chicken sushi, they call it. But no, that, you, you know sushi. nothing about cooking either, do you? No, I don't. Okay, that's all we got this week. It will help you understand. <clears throat> We'll help you understand some stuff again next week, we hope. Yeah, until then, I'm John. And I'm Brandon. And this was the So-and-So Show. See you soon. See you. No,
Welcome back everyone. Wasn't that a wonderful example of humility? Jesus joined Cleophas and his friend as they were walking down the road, talking about the events and things that had happened over the last couple of days. Again, Jesus dying, him being buried, and then people reporting that he was no longer in the tomb, he was no longer there. And people even seeing angels. And so there were a lot of things going on in their head, a lot of things that they were trying to understand about what had taken place over the last couple of days. So what does Jesus do? He comes to his friends in the form of another friend and just walking with him, asking, you know, what are you talking about? And these men became so excited about this man because not only was he excited about what they were talking about, he explained to them about how the scriptures had talked over all the years about how this was going to happen or why it was going to happen. And so they invited him to be able to even stay with them and eat and enjoy some food because they didn't want him to go away. But as they were sitting there eating, Jesus broke bread and their eyes were open and they re realized and recognized that it was Jesus and they got so excited, but Jesus disappeared. But the thing about it is him disappearing didn't make them sad. It made them even more happy because he opened up their understanding as to what God's plans were. He did not want them to be confused. So he told them and reminded them of the scriptures and what was going to happen and what they needed to do. And they were so excited that they ran back all the way back to tell Jesus' disciples what had taken place. The thing about this story, it continues to show us how Jesus cared even after he had been buried and resurrected. Jesus never stops caring about us. He always wants to make sure that we are taken care of and that we have an understanding of what's going on and what's happening so we can know better who he is to us. One of the things about us we want to make sure that you understand is that we can also help other people who may not understand. You may have a friend who is feeling bad. Maybe they feel like they're not as pretty as you are pretty as someone else in your classroom. You can help them understand that they are wonderfully created in God's image, that he made them special in their own way. Let's talk about a bigger picture here. What does that mean for us in regards to our understanding of who God is? God wants us to understand that no matter what we're dealing with, no matter what we're going through, we don't have to be confused and we don't have to feel like we're alone, that he's always going to be there with us and for us. We have an understanding that God is always there. I truly hope that you all enjoyed this lesson and that you got something out of it. And we are excited to continue to learn about who God is to us and helping others understand who God is as well. Before you go, I'd like to pray with you. Lord, we just want to say thank you for allowing us to be able to come together to learn about this lesson on today. We thank you, Lord, for continuously opening up our understanding as to who you are in our lives, that you help us to understand that, God, you are always there for us, that you will always be able to walk with us, talk with us, encourage us because of who you are and in all the things that you have done in our lives. God, we ask that you bless every heart, mind, and soul that comes across this video. We ask that you touch their hearts, Lord God. Help them to have a better understanding of who you are in their lives, Lord God, and the place that you should have in their lives, Lord. We ask that you help us to understand our walk with you. Help us to show humility to others, God, to be caring, to be understanding. And Lord, we'll be ever mindful to give your name glory, honor, and praise for you're worthy of all things. And it's in your name, Jesus, that we pray. Amen. All right. Guys, you can continue to follow along with this series and this lesson by using the Parent Q app. Again, there are so many different lessons and different things that you can do with your friends or your family or even by yourselves. And also, you can continue to be able to watch and learn about this series by joining us on our YouTube page. All you have to do is go in and search under Bethesda Cathedral and you'll be able to find all these lessons and the previous ones that we have shared with you as well. You can also continue to join us every Sunday when these videos are posted. And we'll be so excited to continue to have us joining us all the time. We love you and I hope that you have a wonderful week. Take care, everyone. Bye.